Have you lost weight only to gain it right back after returning to your routine? Did your diet work for someone else but not you? Rockin' That ID Life helps you understand your genetic makeup to find a lifestyle that fits your needs. Together, you and RockinThatIDLife.com can focus on your health and meet your goals today. That's RockinThatIDLife.com. Center Ice Brewery is a proud sponsor of Let's Go Blues Radio. Visit CenterIceBrewery.com today to schedule a no-contact curbside pickup or make a reservation in their awesome tap room. That's Center Ice Brewery located in Midtown St. Louis. Let's go Blues! Welcome to Season 10, Episode 20 of Let's Go Blues Radio, where the often imitated, never duplicated STL Metro Area Wordle Champions, uh, the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast, Special thanks to rockinthatidlife.com and centerizedbrewery.com for proudly sponsoring the show. Please check them out. It is Wednesday, January 26th, and we're broadcasting live on YouTube and Facebook. This is franchise episode number 338 all time. To interact with the show, we're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Just do a search for us. You will find us. I'm Kurt Price. My co-host for tonight's big show are Jeff Ponder and Bill Day. And on the agenda for tonight, we have uh, the Blues Get Spanked in Calgary. A uh, very interesting rematch Thursday night versus the Flames. I think everyone is anticipating our goaltending and our defense. Yay. More goaltending talk. Uh, some news from around the NHL, including the NHL consecutive games played streak being broken. Aaron Dell's check on Drake Batherson and more reverse retro jerseys are coming. All that and more on this week's edition of Let's Go Blues Radio. Hello, fellas. How you doing tonight? Fantastic. How about you, sir? I'm good on this early episode, earlier episode. I'm uh, I'm in a better mood than I think uh, people would probably expect, I guess, from a blue show after the shellacking the team took, which we'll get to. But uh, I'll just go ahead and say this at the top of the show. You, you don't have your A game every night in an 82 game season. So I didn't take it too hard. And I'm excited, like you said, for tomorrow night should be a fun game. So I'm I'm in good spirits. I'm in a good mood tonight. I mean, it's not like we're you know, on the bubble right now of a playoff spot or, or four or six points out, whatever. I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're all right. <clears throat> how about you, Bill? Right. It, it, and how often, uh, I'm, I'm all things considered blues wise. I'm, I'm good. I mean, how often, you know, is Monday the second of a back to back for you, <clears throat> especially a, um, you know, uh, a very, very long flight after apparently a very, very long drive to the airport in Vancouver. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it wasn't it wasn't a, a complete shock to see them have a bad game. Um, so I'm I'm not heartbroken about that, but uh, I am I am looking forward to some some uh, discussion around the goaltending tonight. Mm. Goaltending yeah. all over the place with that, uh, the Aaron Dell suspension. I, yeah, did did they come a good down? Show for uh, yeah, Mike yeah, McKenna three games. Or, yeah, three games. That, that's what people three were games. thinking. Three, two, three games. Yep. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you saw a goalie suspended? I can't even think of it. For throwing a hit, never. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, and yeah. goalies aren't called that often for it. So, right, pretty crazy. But yeah, and you 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 breathe on a goalie wrong, and you get a penalty. Yep. Uh, and that's again, that's a, that's a forward talking. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> Bill's probably that's thinking, gonna be fuck fun. off. That's going to be some fun discussion. <laughs> uh, our official beer is episode number 338. You can follow us, each of us, on the Untapped app. My handle is CPrice12. Jeff's is JPonder94. Bill's is Billy Blue Note 33 uh, You guys, I know Bill especially, uh, you guys keep up with us better than I do. The uh, Untapped app. Yep. But. Uh, <clears throat> Jeff, uh, what are you? Uh, are you are you having a beer before uh, before you get? You have a game tonight, later tonight. Yes, that's yeah. why we're a little early, folks. Uh, well, that and I know Bill's uh, he's got duty at PTs after the show tonight too. Um, <clears throat> My other other job, right? Yeah, right. Um, but no, I uh, the sports I cabaret, a obviously. Hey, and tell yeah. you what, folks, if you're out in Kirkwood, come out and check us out at 10:30 over at the Kirkwood Ice Rink. Um, but yeah, 10:30 tonight. So that's why we're doing the show a little early. No beer for me. I'm not one of those guys, as I was telling you guys before. Uh, I'm just not one of those guys that can drink and play hockey. I do it once a year. Uh, my buddies and I, uh, once a year, get together around Christmas time and just have a skate and just literally just drink Bud Select the whole time and just have a good time. So 
that's the only time to do it. I can't do it for any kind of league game or anything. But so tonight I'm drinking Rockin' That ID Life, or I guess ID Life, from RockinThatIDLife.com. The energy, uh, always a good stuff. Always something I drink before a game, to be quite honest. There you go. It's that flavor, too. No, that's the pina colada, right? That's the pina, not pina, pina. Sorry, pina. Geronimo pina tilde. colada. There's a tilde <laughs> on the end, Jeff. There is. <laughs> Say it right. <laughs> Sorry. Pina colada. <laughs> Pina colada. Yeah, it's how a rural Missouri says it, right? Pina colada. Uh, Bill, what are you uh, <clears throat> what are you sporting? Uh, I'm going with mm. the dark stuff. Um, very dark stuff, actually. Um, Plead the Fifth from Dark Horse Brewery um, in um, Jackson, Michigan. I think it's Jackson. It's it's in Michigan uh, in that nice little triangle uh, with Bell's Founders and a few other uh, Saga Talk. Some great breweries up there. Saga, um, yeah. Hoping to, hoping to uh, make it up that way in the next year and a half for a it's, little brewery tour. Yeah. Amy and I went up there for uh, a brewery vacation. You know, we went to a, yeah. a handful of brewery. That was, that was fun. Good trip. Yeah. The, I mean, you yeah. go to the different, I mean, every, almost every craft brewery now has, uh, you can bring your own food in or they serve food. And um, yeah, the uh, New Holland one was uh, especially good with the food. So yeah, yeah. we got a good time. I mean, yeah. I, I highly recommend not far, not a far drive either. It's not that bad. Yeah, no, that's uh, you, you, uh, you put that on my um, driving vacay list. So uh, we'll, we'll see what, uh, what this, uh, what happens with this here pandemic they got us in. And, uh, <laughs> the pandemic going on. Yeah. <laughs> we got a recession going on. Yeah. D a depression. Depression going on. That's right. Depression. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what I was going for. So I'm <laughs> yeah, glad, was, glad you picked up. I, I picked up what you put down. Yeah, uh, very nice. <laughs> what about you, sir? What are you swilling? Uh, swilling. Uh, uh, I, it's a beer I haven't had. I've, I've had a variant of this uh, on the show before, but this is the chocolate, the standard chocolate milk stout from Four Hands Brewery. Uh, usually, I'm my... oh, sorry. You haven't had that one before? Oh no, I've I've had it a lot. I just haven't oh, had it just on, on the show, show in a while. Not on the uh, show. Usually, okay. uh, usually I'm an absence of light guy. Um, I prefer that, but. Uh, I had a handful of these in my fridge. I'm like, ah, I'm going to go through these. So uh, before we get off the beers, um, just real quick. Um, very nice. Very nice. That very nice. chestnut glass. Uh, uh, yeah. UCBC yeah. It was from the, uh, Octoberfest. Uh, Octoberfest, Octoberfest yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Not the That's... big ass mug they had, but the, the smaller one, because I actually wanted to use it. I already have a yeah. huge, big ass mug from years ago. I got it at Recess Brewery. They had it during Oktoberfest, and I never use the damn thing. It's so huge. So I'm like, I want to yeah. use it. I want to buy one. I'm going to use. Yeah, that's I. I have one about the same size from Peel, um, the O'Fallon one when they had Oktoberfest. But uh, I was going to mention uh, last week uh, we were talking about uh, Breckenridge Vanilla Porter. Um, mm -hmm. I was I was in our local supermarket here in Troy tonight, and they actually have a 12 pack variety pack of uh variations of uh breckenridge porters so huh i uh, i will nice. be going back to pick some up uh when i am uh, uh so what, what when, when i have a little more room in the beer fridge um uh, yeah, vanilla one of them, yeah there's vanilla that one of them was cherry there's a cookie Ooh. variety oh yeah that yeah, oh, that does sound good. <laughs> yeah. yeah i want to try that out that sounds awesome yeah i'll check that out so, um, and I don't think they're going to run out of stock because they still had some Christmas beers there too. So uh, it'll be there for a while. Uh, what is it where you guys live, man? Like we ran out of Christmas beer like two weeks before Christmas out here in my area. Yeah. In most you places. Guys, you guys had, they... had the pumpkin beer late too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Not, well, yeah, I think, I, I think most distributors actually pull the stuff back that doesn't sell. So, yeah. Um, this may be an oddity, but maybe. Uh, so in terms of beers of the episode, well, I, I guess we'll go with beverages of the episode. Beverages. Matt Harris in the YouTube chat says, uh, my beer of the week is a French toast latte mm. late night prepping for an interview tomorrow. Uh -huh. uh, Matt, I know you've mentioned in the chat before that you're trying to move back up here to St. Louis. Uh, hopefully that's here. So hopefully that's the case. Hopefully you'll move up here, go to plenty of blues games and center ice parties. 
and uh, hopefully hey, we'll be seeing you seeing you up here. Hey, hey, Matt. Speaking of that, uh, I had something I wanted to uh, talk. To you. Shoot, shoot us an email at radio at let's go blues dot com, and uh, uh, so I can shoot you an email back, and I want to want to shoot you some info about something. Yeah, uh, we're looking for a producer, uh, unpaid. <laughs> right. No, no, it's nothing. Wait, wait. Austin's in the chat. Yeah, oh, 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 sh- 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 oh sh- okay. Don't say anything. Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing show related. It's just uh, something else. So, uh, yep. I thought maybe yep. I could help him out with some. Um, and then we'll uh, Ken Morris says drinking a cool glass of water. Well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm that's a little healthy. confused over in the Facebook chat. Uh, maybe you guys get this reference. Tim Sweeney says, let's go Blunden. Uh, the only Blunden I know is Edmund Blunden, who was a, a 1600s poet. So I don't think that's what he's talking about. <laughs> is that is that a typo for the... Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> if that's the case. Um uh, today in blues history. For, oh, I get it. Okay, I'm just. I'm, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe wasn't there a former NHLer named Mike Blunden? Maybe he's a big Mike Blunden fan. I are you making that up? Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think there was a Mike. Okay. Was there not? I don't know. Check hockey reference. Am I, am I making <laughs> Blunden. Sounds like a sounds like a. Uh, uh, yeah, 80s. there he is. Michael Charles Blunden is a Canadian professional ice hockey winger who is currently an unrestricted free agent. Okay. Uh, looks like he played with the Blue Jackets and the Lightning. Oh, well, hell. Okay, never mind. How about that, huh? It, it sounds like a made-up name. It's, it sounds like a made-up name. <laughs> uh, today in Blues History, courtesy of the at STL Blues History Tour account, January 26th, 1995, the St. Louis Blues play their first game ever at the brand new Kiel Center. Uh, Craig Johnson scored the first goal for the Blues, and Brett Hull scores two in the three to one win versus the LA Kings. Wayne Gretzky scored the first goal for the visiting team in the uh, new building, which is fitting. Uh, yeah, I'll this- say yet another yet another uh, crazy trivia question that yeah. you can just guess Wayne Gretzky and you would get it right. Right. It, that's the kind of guess that somebody who didn't really know hockey would guess. Uh, I'll guess the greatest goal scorer ever, Wayne Gretzky. Yep. You're right. Ah. Uh, <laughs> this was the first game in uh, Old Kiel Center because the start of the season was delayed due to a lockout. Um, I was actually at stick during the lockout. I was at stick and puck at Cahokia um, and uh, KSDK came by and uh, they, sorry, my daughter's calling me. <laughs> there we go. God, what are you what are you doing, Zoe? <laughs> she knows better. Don't, don't you know Dad's doing the show? Yeah, there come join again. the show. Come on. Do you need to get that? Should we? Should we no, 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 no. You? no. It's okay. It's okay. She knows. She'll she, figure, she figure it out. out. She should know. She'll figure the house it out. is on fire. It's right, okay. right, right, right. No. <laughs> uh, but I was at the Koki Ice Rink uh, during the lockout, and they KSTK came by, and they were interviewing some people, you know, just to get you know. Uh, sound clips from local hockey people, I guess, for uh, uh, comments about the lockout or coming out of the lockout. They were going to, uh, I think it was either going into the lockout or coming out of it. I can't remember. But I was on air uh, after I come off the ice and I had a Jose Cuervo bandana on. <laughs> a oh, red wow. Jose Cuervo bandana. Uh, and uh, yeah, I caught some shit from the opposing team uh, after next week's game. They were they they saw me and they were like making fun of the Jose Cuervo. Mike, that was in a day did where I wore tie, a bandana, huh? Did you have it tied in the front? No, no. But I did have my my button up shirt, just the top button only buttoned. So, Ooh, yeah. nice. Yeah, but yeah. So that and that was in the days where I wore a bandana under my helmet, which not a good idea. I don't know why I did that. That was cool, I guess. <clears throat> that was uh, your look. That, that was that a look for a while. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do it all the time, though. I just did it sometimes. I don't know. Man. I, I don't had know. a helmet that I used to love, and but the problem was it got so old that it stopped the sweat from getting into my eyes. It, it just would just pour down like rain. Yeah. So I started wearing a headband with it, and, oh, man, I caught a lot of shit for that from my, my own team, the other team. It was I bad. Think, I think I Velcroed a sweatband into the front of my hockey, uh, my helmet, at one time, like the, you know, the, uh, to the padding up by the forehead, just to try and help with the sweat. Cause I got the same thing. 
sweat pouring down. Yeah. Uh, January 26, 1991, the St. Louis Blues defeated the D- Detroit Red Wings 5-4 to four on an overtime goal by Jeff Courtnall. Adam Oates recorded an assist in all five Blues goals that made nine assists for Adam Oates in two games on back-to-back nights. So uh, that's that's got to be that's got to be a record. Nine assists uh, and back, back to back. You got to think Gretzky's probably done something like that. You think he had five assists and back like ten assists in two games? Back to back. I mean, we were scoring. Maybe. Your team's scoring eight goals a game. Uh, it's completely right. possible. I know, I know, but I mean, it's if it's not if it's not up there, it's got to be up there. It's probably a Blues record. I'll give you that for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something tells me that Paul Coffey might have done that sometime <laughs> in, in the yeah. Oilers eighties, right? So, yeah. but yeah, that was that was the uh, the whole um, eighty six year, right? So, not surprising. Well, this was ninety one that uh, Oates did it, but yeah, uh, January twenty sixth, okay. two thousand and eleven. Eric Johnson of the St. Louis Blues scores into his own net while trying to clear the puck on a stunning pass across the crease on a rush he just. He just slammed the puck into the back of his own net. Obviously not aware of where he was in the ice. Philip McRae, a product of the AAA Blues, scored his first NHL goal. <laughs> Turn that off. Uh, scored, <laughs> Philip McRae, a product of the AAA Blues, scored his first NHL goal in the Blues 4-1 loss versus the Calgary Flames. Um, you know, On the play where Eric Johnson put the puck into his own net, can you guess who his defensive partner was? 2011. January 26th, 2011. Yeah. It was Eric Brewer. <laughs> that's, yep. that's exactly where Monkeys I was going. Fucking a football is what they look like out there in that play. <laughs> yep. I actually, I actually do think I remember this because I remember thinking I, I had a similar situation when I was like, I was probably 14, 13, maybe. I got spun around uh, right in front of the net. The puck was laying in the crease, and I literally, as I was spinning, I lifted my stick and I just. Fired on the puck, fired it in my own net. I thought I was facing the other way, and I was just the minute I did it, I'm like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" That that was a total NHL '98 move. Yeah, I've I, being the goalie, I you know accidentally knocked a couple into my own net, but that's a little more forgivable. I will say the the few times in my life that somebody on my own team put the puck into my net. It was, it only happened, I think, three times while I was playing actual competitive rec or competitive non rec league hockey. And yeah, mostly as a younger kid, but I remember giving them the stare of death every time. It's just, it, it's hard to get past as a goalie. Uh, January 26, 1980, Lynn Patrick, the first St. Louis Blues general manager. Uh, head coach and hockey Hall of Fame, uh, Hall of Famer, left the Blues game that night uh, on January 26th, uh, a four to four tie at home versus the Colorado Rockies. Uh, left due to an illness, but crashed his car near the arena uh, after suffering a heart attack, and he uh, passed away Oof. that night. Yeah, mm, so terrible. I would assume leaving the arena for an illness was related to the heart attack. You know, not feeling well mm. leading up to the heart attack. So. Probably, probably shouldn't have driven home. Not, not feeling well, but yeah, call an ambulance. Yeah, You're always safe with that. Yeah, hindsight being twenty twenty, and completely different era, right? Sure, I mean, a heart attack was going to kill you like a hell of a lot more often than it would now. True. Nobody, nobody there to tell him to take some aspirin. <laughs> January 26, 1961, happy 61st birthday to Wayne Gretzky. Do you know the word for being the age of the year you were born? Like he's 61 and he was born in 61. Do you know what there's a name for that? Do you know what it is? I had no idea. No, what is it? It's called a Bedian birthday. Apparently, <laughs> I'll tell you why. The Bedian birthday is named after a New York City firefighter, Bobby Bedia, who noted oh. the co- yeah, he simply noted the coincidence and pointed it out. <laughs> now it's named after him. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So in interesting that that's made into the world beyond this in firefighter. T- in 2070, I will be 85, and that will be my Bedian birthday. 
So okay. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and uh, what? And uh, I'll be what in seventy four. I'll be seventy four. When I'm seventy four, uh, I'd use a calculator. I'm yeah, a cheater. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be <laughs> twenty, thirty. You know, twenty five, twenty seven years. Something you like said nineteen seventy four. You were twenty seven years. So so uh, forty eight. Two thousand forty eight. Forty nine. Two thousand forty eight. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, I'll be it'll be uh twenty fifty two for me. Okay. Hmm. You gonna make it? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh I I have a I have a, a witty comeback, but I'll I'll spare my Uber cynicism right now. Oh. So. <laughs> uh okay. the blues suffer a seven one shellacking versus Calgary. Uh we'll talk about that along with um Goaltending. Have you heard that there's a goaltending, uh, you know, talk in St. Louis right now? I mean, about uh, Huso and Bennington. I mean, there's there's some talk. You, and you mean there's th- something else going on in St. Louis other than that? Is uh, that what you're suggesting? N- no, because that's I'm not. all I'm, I hear about anymore. I'm gonna, well, I mean, if you haven't heard about it, um, it's happening, and and we'll we'll throw a hat in the ring for this, uh, this goofy discussion, uh, after, uh, this word from our sponsor, ID life. You don't live your life. Like the guy you see at the gym, powerlifting seven days a week. You also don't live it like the cycling class instructor or the vegan who gets her steps every day. So why go to the vitamin store and try the same stuff they're using and hope it meets your needs. Newsflash. It doesn't. RockinThatIDLife.com is here to help you better understand how you respond to food and exercise. Their supplements are developed to make sure you're using quality products you can trust to achieve the results that are meaningful to you. Is your goal to improve overall energy, achieve deeper sleep, lose or gain weight? The answer to all of those options? Rockin' That ID Life can help. Our friend Dustin at RockinThatIDLife.com is here to help you do life better and achieve your goals not someone else's. Get started today by visiting rockinthatidlife.com or emailing Dustin at rockinthatidlife at gmail.com and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you to receive 10% off your order. That's rockinthatidlife.com and start your betterment journey today. Uh, yeah, no, the, the uh, my, my daughter was trying to call me like three or four times during the first uh, segment, and it's just she calls me to tell me good night when she's not here. So that's, oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So she's not going to sleep well tonight is what you're telling me. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I, I tell her, you know, when I'm doing the show, you know, I might not be able to answer the, sh- answer the phone. So I say on Wednesdays, if you want to call before, uh, well, you know, she does, I, say, I usually say before nine, and she did call it before nine, but. Yeah, it's uh, it's we started earlier than usual, so I didn't tell her that. So and I feel a little bad. That makes sense. Okay, so yeah, I'll admit I was slightly concerned, but that makes way more sense now. Yeah, no, she's just a, she's just a good daughter. She likes to say, uh, call me and say. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, I, I wish love my it. son loved me. <laughs> I feel bad missing the call. I I, I do because I, I, I love it, but you know, uh, I'll uh, I'll talk to her tomorrow. <clears throat> Uh, so the Blues uh, suffered a seven to one shellacking versus the Calgary Flames in Calgary on Monday night, after a convincing complete five to nothing victory in Seattle on Friday night, and then a less than stellar three to one victory in Vancouver, where the Blues didn't play particularly well. Uh, but Huso was uh, the man in net that night. The Blues played their third game in four nights and laid a huge egg in Calgary, uh, losing seven to one. We actually scored the first goal oh. in this. Yeah, good. I, I just wanted to add, uh, again, um, I guess it's on Wednesdays that he does this. Chris Kerber, again, went on uh, the Riz show this morning on 105.7 The Point. And I I kind of liked what he said. It actually made sense. He said, you could see this loss coming. It was boiling oh. up with how well they played lately. And then on, on Sunday, how they basically should have lost that game. Yeah. If it wasn't really who's so standing on his head, they lose that game. And then they come out, play basically the same way, but I think even worse defensively. I mean, when you're slide tackling your own goalie. Um, That's bad. Yeah, just a just a bad yeah. night. And like I said, Chris Kerber called it perfectly. You kind of saw that coming for the Blues. Yeah, that, uh, the Vancouver game, I mean, you've got, you know, probably the, the hottest goalie in the NHL going up against a fourth stringer. 
you know that mm-hmm. and that's the blues won by virtue of that right it, it was mm-hmm. vancouver had the you know the the better share of the play um i thought they drove the play and Huso was just really good um and then yeah i mean i i would agree with that assessment completely that, that game was was coming it was overdue mm-hmm. and uh yeah i mean and- it was painful it's painful because you know it's Monday night. Looking forward to you know watching a rare hockey game on a Monday night, but yeah. oh, man. And you know what's funny is that um, I, I mentioned this to you guys the other day that uh, during the day on Monday, uh, the sports sports radio people in in St. Louis, the the hockey folks, they uh, quote quote hockey folks, right? Um, you know they were talking about the Blues and, and Flames coming up that night. And uh, they were like, you know, why are the why are the Blues uh, not favored in this game? And I'm like, and you know, and then they 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 proceeded to say, you know, basically put their non hockey knowledge out there. It's like, oh, okay, first of all, they're playing second half back to back. Calgary not playing particularly great, but their goalie's playing really well. Um, and uh, Bennington's back in net. So, I mean, and it's who knows how it's going to go with because who so played the night before played well. So, I mean, and it's funny because they, I, I was like, well, it's, 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 you could see, like, like Kerber said, you could see a loss coming. Um, and we, but we scored first. In, yeah. But we scored yeah. first in this game. Uh, and, but, you know, the lead didn't last long. Uh, uh, Calgary scores three goals in the first, four goals in the second. You know, the, with a cart, the wheels just came off the cart completely. Uh, through two periods, the Blues were being outshot 35 to 9. Uh, Huso came in to Lee Bennington and played in the third just to, I mean, it wasn't in an attempt to change the tide. The game was over. Uh, but, uh, you know, just to just to get Bennington out. And and it's funny because then Huso came in and stopped all 13 shots against. And that just, Put a little more fuel on the on the <laughs> Bennington and who's so fire that's being talked about. Uh, Bennington allowed uh, five goals on twenty seven shots with a save percentage of eight hundred. Who's so stopped all thirteen? Uh, Blues Rod shot forty eight to twenty one in the game. Face off favorite Calgary at sixty percent to forty percent. Calgary was two for five on the power play. Blues were an over. Uh, Miklo went minus five. Miles Miklo went and and Rob was Mikko benched for the. Yeah, he was yeah. benched for the third period. Miko was uh, yeah. uh, benched for the third, didn't play at all. Uh, Ruby on Mikola, uh, on the reason why he was benched, this is one of those nights a lot of players go through it in their careers, and he's just got to be mentally strong and go out and just be aggressive and do what he does. I got mm. the impression from his comments that he'll play uh, tomorrow night tomorrow on Thursday. Night. Well, yeah. the the line rushes uh, this morning was Pareko alternating with Mikola and Wallman. So okay. you have to wonder... Is he considering putting Wallman in, or is that just another push from Baruby to say, Mikola, you got to work for this? Maybe it's yeah, a little both. I, yeah. Well, I mean, you you got to keep Wallman, you know, prepped and ready to go. But I think it's it's more of you know the motivating factor for for Mikola. But you know, I thought both Mikola and Pareko looked like they just did not have legs. Like Baruby kept rolling them out there, and they weren't skating. I mean, even the the I think it was the um, fourth Calgary goal. Uh, Pareko was like, you know, I don't know if he had been out there for a minute and a half, but he it looked like he was basically standing around and like pivoting in one place. He just he didn't have anything left to to move, and it's mm-hmm. like. Gotta gotta keep him off the ice if he's doing that. And then, you know, we get to the third period and Mikola's the one that pays the price and sits. Pareko Pareko looked like he belonged playing with my men's league team tonight. That's the way he looked in that game. He was a minus four in the game too, so he wasn't much better. Um, And I get that you can't scratch, you can't uh, uh, sit two defensemen and just leave four guys out there for the third period, but Pareko deserved a benching as much as Mikola did. In my opinion, yeah, yeah, he 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 could have uh, used uh, a little more more time off the ice. I, I wouldn't uh, advocate for a full benching. 
really for either of them. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if the point, if, you know, if, if part of the point of benching Mikolo was, you know, that he just didn't have the legs, I get it. He, he looked like yeah. he didn't. Uh, yeah. Falk somehow managed to be even in this game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, future blue math, Matthew Kachuk had five assists. Uh, mm -hmm. Johnny Goudreau, Johnny Hockey had one goal, three assists. Just a horrible night all around and it, yeah. it got to the point where after it was like after they scored like five goals it's like you could just i mean four or five goals it just they didn't have it they i mean this game was just yeah, they right did, did three games four nights didn't have it um uh bennington wasn't playing big defense was was completely soft and 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 unaggressive and just and, awful and uh just diving for pucks i mean like Ooh. not and i get it trust me i do that all the time go down on a two-on-one try to block the pass i get that but i mean there was just not skating not skating i better dive to try and keep up with the play like there Oops, was a I lot dived of into my goalie yeah bertuzzo yeah. dives into bennington and and knocks him over and just i mean there's no shot at making the save there that's the kind of night it was it's just one of those nights it happens um and after it was like four or five to one i'm like i don't even care I mean, it doesn't yeah. anything that happens after this point doesn't matter. It's just one of those games yeah. where they could look like the worst hockey team ever. I wouldn't care. It doesn't it doesn't the the the, the mindset has changed. They know the game's over. Um, it's just, just get the game over with. Don't burn nobody, the get tape. Hurt. nobody get hurt. That's a burn. That's a burn the tape night They're right. You know, yes, I'm sure they reviewed it a little bit. But, you know, Craig Bruby is not going to be, all right, boys, we got a four-hour session tomorrow in the video room. You know, that's not going to happen. This is a burn-the-tape no. game. He gets they were tired, and uh, you just you just got to move on from it. And, yeah, if you if you come out tomorrow night and have a similar effort, then you've got – maybe you consider you've got a problem. Yeah, if it's that's... one game in the middle of nowhere – that happens. It's that's more that's it's, why I'm interested yeah. about tomorrow's night, tomorrow night's game more than I would be usually against a game against Calgary, you know, on a Thursday night after having a couple nights off. I think yeah. tomorrow night's game is is very interesting. And the shoes on the other foot tomorrow night because Calgary's playing tonight. Yeah, right. And it'll be the, and that'll be their third game in five nights, I guess, not four. Who's in that for them tonight? Good question. Are they, who are they playing? Tonight? They're playing. Uh, they're playing. So I can pull up the score here. They're playing. Are they playing tonight? Oh yeah, they're playing. Oh, they beat uh, Columbus six nothing. Oh, wow! And in net for them, uh, Markstrom. Okay, Markstrom. So I wonder who he might not play tomorrow. Right? Well, if he if he pitched a shutout against Columbus, he very well could be. Well, he only made twenty three yeah, saves, so he may not have had a ton of work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, right now, thirteen goals in two games for them. Um, I, I, and Markstrom's coming off a shutout. I put him back out there. What I wouldn't have done is it's not a division uh, game, what though. Ruby did and put Huso in for the third. I thought that was an absolute mistake. I thought it was a mistake personally, and I'm not. It has nothing to do. I'm not trying to defend Bennington by any means with this, but I thought it was a mistake playing Bennington against the better team in Calgary. I thought I he too. hasn't played in I a did while. Too. I did too. I thought you play him against Vancouver yeah. uh, a little, yeah. you know, get his mind back into playing a, a team. And and honestly, you've already played Huso against some great teams. Why not play him against a better team in a back-to-back? -back? That's well, I think that's mm -hmm. the way I would have done it. But, you know, I'm not that right. coach. I think I think Bruby fell into the trap of oh hey my guy got a shutout I'm gonna I'm gonna roll him back out there for the next game, and it's like this is probably a time when you want to give a guy that might need a little bit of uh, you know a morale boosting in Bennington uh, give him the easier of the two games and put Huso out there. I mean I I don't think you know the the fact that Huso you know, didn't give up a goal, um, you know, in the third period. And what you said, he faced 13 shots. Yep. I don't think that, I don't think that, you know, that that's really a fair assessment. I don't think, you know, I mean, Calgary was still coming, um, but you know, they knew they had it in the bag at that point. Oh, you're going to let off yeah. some, um, both teams won off the ice. They don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nobody wants to get, yeah, injured, you, but 
No. You I let just, you let Bennington close out that third, and if he can shut him down for that third period, that's a little bit more of a confidence boost. I don't I right. don't know. I, I I mean I I get why he made the switch. I totally do. I mean he I mean allowing I seven goals through two periods. Well, then you run into a Patrick Waugh situation in Montreal. What if they score four more in the third? And all of a sudden he's about eleven goals, and it's like at what point do you I mean you're now he's just getting. I mean it, it was embarrassing enough as it was seven goals in two periods, but now it's like. This is a career embarrassment for him. Right. So, but you know what I mean. I, at I totally some get point, it. right. At, at some point, you you have career embarrassment, and you know, right. And and I know Bennington's a proud guy, just like Patrick Waugh was. But I mean, Patrick Waugh got lit up for eleven goals by the Detroit Red Wings Detroit. in their prime. Right. That was the that that team would have would have beaten anybody if they could have figured out how to beat New Jersey's left wing lock in, in Dude, the final, right? That, okay. that, that team was just amazing. But Bennington, you know, I, I, I mean, I tweeted that he's got to eat the shit burger. It's a total team shit burger and he's got to eat it. He's got to see this through. And, you know, I, you don't risk putting Huso out there and, you know, one undermining his confidence and getting him off of his game or two injury, right? If you know you don't want to hurt, you you, you don't want to do anything that is going to throw throw a wrench into the guy that's hot. Well, yeah, I mean, I I get it, but I I think this is the standard play too. You know, I, I mean, you don't you don't take Bennington out uh, during the second because that's more embarrassing. You do it, you know, you you, you do the transition in the locker room, you know, so you don't you don't have to skate off the ice, you know, right. So in, I, unless, I, get I totally get it. Right. Unless Baruby asked Bennington, do you want to come out? I, I think that's the wrong move. If if Bennington said, well, I just do don't have it tonight, I I just I at some point I think it, it's actually it would be a source of pride for a goalie, you know, it, it to to say, I'm gonna see this out. Right. For, for Bennington to, to learn to own that, I think that would have been a better way to go for one. And it, like I said before, I don't I don't want to put the guy who's on the heater at risk of, you know, our defense hadn't shown up. I don't want him to go out there and get lit up. And now I've got two goalies who aren't sure about themselves. That's just but, to me. That was just stupid coaching. But who so stopped all 13? So. No issue right. with the confidence. So, I mean, hindsight, right. it was it ended up being, as far as you know, no injury. You know, he stopped all thirteen. Shouldn't have any confidence issues or anything with a with a bad third period. So, it ended up it ended up working out. I I understand what you're saying. There's right. risk there. I get it. Um, right. But I, but but, I, I get, but again, I fall back on. I think it's the standard play. I mean, it's and again, I think. Would you would do you think that Wild was left in too long against Detroit, or do you think he should have been pulled sooner? Um, I th- that was eleven well, goals too, though. So it was, it was eleven goals, but um, it's like, but at eleven goals, it's like, well, what's the why? Why take him out now? You know, I mean, it, it right. I don't know. No, I, I, I think then, like, Montreal still had something to play for, right? They, they, they were, you know, it, it, it's such a such a monumentous game in the history of that franchise uh, that. Of course, I'm going to say you take him out after the second period. It, it was all about ego, right? It was all about, um, you know, oh sure, Tremblay having a bigger right. ego than Patrick Wad and Wad saying no, that's not the case. Um, I I absolutely would have taken him out. It, to this day, it breaks my heart that that he left Montreal and couldn't lead them to any more cups. Grateful that he he won, you know, in Colorado a few times but yeah it, it's that was such a terrible decision in the history of the Habs franchise not to change I don't feel the same way about Bennington you know Bennington is 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 not I I love him I I think he's he is a a good modern goalie but he is not on the same level as Patrick Waugh no I'm not suggesting he's anywhere close to that but um yeah, I yeah, mean, he's no he's no Charlie Lindgren. <laughs> because he's man, the savior you're, if you ask I have, I have nothing about You're Lindgren. freaking right. I have nothing about <laughs> Lindgren in the show notes, but you could talk about him too because there's a lot of people wanting 
you know, the blues to uh, deal who deal Bennington and, uh, and make the uh, who's so Lindgren tandem tandem. And just a couple of weeks ago, you had everybody and their uncle saying trade who which is like the, that wasn't the, even, that was, that was like a week ago. One of the dumbest yeah. things I've ever, we talked about this on the show last week. One of the dumbest suggestions ever, especially, okay. Now, and, and now if you believe the fans that say Bennington sucks, right? Like, so probably the same people that were saying trade Huso the week before. So wait a second. You don't want either of our goalies, basically. You want to trade Huso to get something for him because he's good, right? Because that's what people do. They want to trade anyone and everyone as soon as they're good so we can get something for him. So we don't lose him to free agency. You know, so it's just bonkers stupid. I right. I kind of understand that a bit when it's a guy like Petrangelo, you know. And again, if if you're not at the, the top of uh, the standings, if you're – Maybe a bubble team. That's even different. Consider. That's that's yeah, I'm talking, much I'm talking different. About our team. Well, when yeah. you're on top of the division, right? And and again, with it being your backup, who's not making a lot of money, not going to fetch you a lot because I'm sorry, folks, people are not looking. There's not a lot of. Uh, there's okay. Let's put it like this. There's no playoff team looking for a new goalie right now, and if there is, they're not going to take a flyer on a guy who's had 12 good games. Uh, it, it's not going to happen. So. If they Why do, now they would take a flyer on a him. Better chance. They would take a flyer on him, but it wouldn't be for anything of value whatsoever. And and I saw somebody of note comment. Um, I think it was a non Blues person. Uh, somebody comment on Twitter: "The Blues just can't let Huso walk in free agency." And I'm like, <laughs> "Why the fuck not?" Like I, again, this well, isn't a Petrangelo situation, isn't it? I well, remember Pavel Dimitro was was in this conversation at one point. I understood that at least understood the argument of you don't want that. But the way that I look at it is the way Columbus looked at their situation a couple of years ago when they kept their free agents instead of training them because they were like, we're going to go all in this year. Let's see what we got. And I think it's the same thing here with Huso. You've got a good backup. Yeah, you might lose him in free agency, but guess what? Remember, Charlie Lindgren is an NHL goalie, if you ask a lot of people. And Bennington has always proven to be able to bounce back in his short NHL career. So you keep Huso in the hopes that maybe you go on a cup run and you're going to need him. So, yeah, maybe you lose him in free agency, but maybe you made a good cup mm. run the year before. Yeah, I don't. I, ahead, you need to have, you know, what I've, what I've said before, and I'll keep saying it, you need to have two good goalies in this day and age you don't get one and trade the other like you, like why not bill this, why, this... why explain to everyone why you would never want to do that in today's nhl for the people <clears throat> that just came in in the back for the yeah say the people in the back <laughs> <clears throat> because the seasons ebb and flow and there is no franchise goaltender in the nhl today like it, I, I don't see any goalie out there besides Vasilevsky. That's the one guy that I will, I will, you know, Tampa was able to go out and sign, you know, a 37 year old Brian Elliott because they, they can rely on Vasilevsky outside of him. I don't, I don't want to go into a season, even in Florida with the money that they gave Bobrovsky, like, uh, you know, they have Spencer Knight. Who's a who's going to be a great goalie in his own right? Neither one of those guys are are you know going to be franchise goalies. There, the the idea of a franchise goalie is not how an NHL GM today thinks. Remember like, when? Remember when uh, Minnesota they had Fernandez and who was the other one? Uh, 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 <clears throat> Oh, but they, they, they were like, they were like, they split time. Right. 50, Rollison. 50. Rollison. They split yeah. time. Fernandez, Rollison, and then, right. And, 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 they, and they split time. That was like, and they beat, one right, of the first they beat teams the Colorado to do that. Avalanche, right? Yeah, that that was one of the first teams to do that. Because at the time it was like, whoa, you don't have a number one. What happens come playoff time? Well, every team has a number one, but the, the time is shared a lot more now than it used to be. But Minnesota was like 50, 50. But that was interesting because, Teams are are like more like Minnesota was then right now than uh, you know uh, they're not. So it's it's interesting how things have changed. 
because more, yeah, and they're more like Minnesota. And we criticize, we didn't criticize them. It was like kind of puzzled. Like, what, what are you going to do during playoff time? How, who's the number one? But this is kind of interesting how it yeah. changes. And, oh. and it's funny because this, this is the con I made the joke earlier. This is the conversation in St. Louis right now. And I, I yeah, um, it's just funny because like Bill said, ebbs and flows of the season. I really honestly, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I could see it happening where who so, you know, comes back. Let's face it, folks, just like Biddington in his first season, he's playing a little above his head right now. No goalie can keep this pace up. So who so he's going to come back. Yeah. So that is, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying when Bennington in 2019, right. right, right. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that I could see possibly who so coming back down to earth a little bit, not falling off the map, but coming back down to earth. And I then Bennington, like he did late season last year, like he did the season before. And of course, like he did in 2019, Bennington, when the playoff pushes on playing some of his best hockey. And then all of a sudden guys in two months, we're going to have a conversation of, well, man, um, they don't have a reliable backup because Huso's not playing well, but Bennington's playing great. And it's just like people need to step back and realize that the, the, the season is long and this kind of thing happens all the time for every team. And again, maybe Huso keeps the number one job the rest of the year. And if he does, that's fine. That means he's playing great, so I'm happy. But – you don't put all your eggs in one basket just yet. It's Ooh. just, it's too early. McKinnon, uh, did you see that? You're watching the Boston uh, Colorado game? McKinnon just took a shot, looks like to the face. Um, he looked like he was hurt, kind of like kicking his legs on the ice, holding his face. Kind of looked kind of mm. bad. You hate to see it. Yeah, it's a, yeah, I mean, early in the game too, first period, and it's, oh yeah, like a shoulder in the face. Didn't look dirty. It looked like, I don't know. It's tough. High speed stuff. Anyway. Um, mm. Yeah. I, 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 it's the TNT game. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, um, I'll put it in. Yeah. And I think with, with, with who, so any, we talked about going to free agency and losing a free agency. I don't think the blues would lose him in free agency at all. I think they would uh, closer to the end of the season. If who, so continues to play like he is, I think I, they should make an effort to resign him before we even get to the off season. You know, uh, yeah, and I I, to to lock him up for a couple of years, um, to yeah, and just to have, I mean, because really he could go either way. I mean, he's had a great season so far, no question. Love the way he's been played. Confidence in him for me and like everyone probably is sky high. Feel mm -hmm. so confident with him in that. <clears throat> but it would it shock anybody if he regresses and. And then Bennington slowly transitions back to him as being the guy who gets more starts. Wouldn't surprise anybody at all. So I, or, because the or if it just became a 50, 50 split. Right. Yeah. And the, and the, because the sample size with him is so small. So you can't, we've talked about, I don't, if people, these knee jerk reactions, as far as, uh, who so goes, I mean, just enjoy the fact that he's playing well and don't screw things up. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't get it. <clears throat> Well, and let's go yeah, back to I, when Charlie Lindgren was up here. People it, wanted the conversation. Yeah, the what thing. was the conversation then? It was, hey, send Huso down. We don't care that he has to go through waivers. Lindgren is the backup. Yeah. And it's like so again, five games. Just how many it was a different five games. goalie conversations have we had throughout this one season? It, it's as soon as a goalie starts to play well, it's like, that's the guy. That's the guy. Yep. Get rid of everyone else. That's him. And then six months later, if the backup for him starts playing well that's the new guy what is yep. the deal what is the deal with one right. to, to somebody else permanently it's so weird can we call that the jordan bennington syndrome but it's it's always been that, that, though, that right? Was, it, right but but you know it, it probably validated that feeling for a lot of people um but it was lightning in a bottle it, it's not going to happen again like there will be a movie made <laughs> it, yeah. about that team because it was such an incredible story. It's not going to happen again. And not and at least not with Canadian this team. underdog. And this is not the same situation either at all the, the, with Huso this season. There's no Chad Johnson on this team. But like they had in 19, they, they got rid of Johnson. Right. They brought up Bennington because Huso was hurt. Um, and Bennington didn't start for a while. And, and, and Allen wasn't getting it done consistently. Um, and the thing too with Allen he was inconsistently not getting it done for years. 
So, and, right. and what had Allen ever won ever, except for one playoff series, nothing he didn't win anything. So, right. so the, the, and, the, the transition they were to going was, was January a no-brainer. when he disappeared. Yeah. So the, yeah, the, absolutely. The transition to Benton was a no brainer. You got to give him a shot. And then he's hot. Yes. Ride his hot hand because Allen has never proven anything. So right, right now well, let's, You've got Huso, which, yes, I'm all ride the hot hand. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Especially with Bennington not playing as well as we'd want him to play necessarily. But um, I, I just, it's, it's, it's just a completely different situation right now. Because Bennington has yep. proven, and he, he won a fucking Stanley Cup here. How many, I don't, I mean, come on. Blues fans come off as ungrateful. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not saying stick with the guy forever, right? But he won you a fucking Stanley Cup. He deserves the benefit of the doubt in situations like these to correct his game, especially when the defense in front of him is statistically proven to be hanging him out to dry. Yes, and let's let's also not forget that last season without him, the Blues are not a playoff team. They don't make the playoffs last year at all. I know they lost in four straight, but again, we said it a million times. That's not on Bennington. He played he no, was the he only was, Blues player on the ice that series. Right. He was the best player by far for the Blues. And he was and and, and the season after they won the cup in twenty uh, in nineteen twenty. Uh we the, the the season that was stopped short just before the end because of COVID. Uh we were first in the West. So it's like Yeah. I mean, and he was our goalie. He was the number one. So it's like, I mean, he had the cup run. He had that next season. He wasn't as good as the cup run, but no one's ever going to be that good over the long haul ever, ever, ever. It's impossible. So, I mean, he was fine that season. Um, and that's that's the thing that drives me nuts when you see people say, well, his numbers have dipped every season since he won the cup. No fucking shit. He had a ridiculous stat line that, that first season. He's like, you, like, we said it at the time. He's not going to keep this up. He's going to fall back down to earth next season a little bit. Hopefully not a lot. But if he keeps this up, he's got and, Patrick Waugh numbers at the end of his career. That's not going to happen. And you know, and that, that's a great example why you don't put all your eggs in the Huso basket right now. And anoint him the number one and trade Bennington, or you, which you can't do anyway. It's a dumb <laughs> suggestion. Um, because uh, like ebbs and flows, you know, and 13 games. Come on. Um, I like I like what we got a great, great uh, conversations going on here in the YouTube and Facebook chats. Uh, one thing Derek says here, uh, I would like to think that social media fans are not the majority of fans, but I don't know how realistic that is. Uh, I don't know. That is a I would love to figure that out. Like have I don't know how the Blues could do it. Maybe season ticket holders, people who are 10 games. Are you on Twitter? Are you on Facebook? Are you active? And then we could find out a percentage. Yeah. Because, yeah, I would like to know that too. But I will say, like, when I talk to people, like I got a, a couple older guys on my ice hockey team. Um, they all say they're not on social media, and they all back Bennington. And, well, they back Huso too. They're just, they're like us. They say, I don't fucking care who's in net as long as the Blues are winning games. Don't trade anyone. Keep them both. Yeah, no, I, that's, I'm totally on board with that. There's, you don't, that don't, yeah. Well, you can't move Bennington and it'll be stupid to move Huso. So what, 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 what you, you roll with what you got. And I, I, I'm, I'm fine with what we got. I really am for, I mean, now that could change come playoff time based on how things go. Um, but you just gotta, you can't just, I mean, I, I don't know if every fan base is this way. I assume they are, but the knee-jerk, bipolar nature of of uh, Blues fans is just like it, it, it goes from game to game. It's like I mean, someone has a, like a goal, goaltending, especially. It's like, oh my god, I, I the what have you done for me lately? Yeah. Is like in <clears throat> small segments. Jesus, right? And and you know, it it, it drives me nuts when uh, you know, Julie and I talk about the Blues and and the goaltending. Like she's she is. Uh, taking it uh, a little too far with the idea that, uh, you know, the blues kill goalies, right. They were good before they got here and it's like, no, actually, you know, and she likes to throw out Jordan Bennington. Look, he's, he's gotten, he's he hasn't been good. Like he was in his first year. It's like, but that kind of disproves your point, right? <laughs> we didn't kill him. He came up and won it for us. Yeah. He's just, you know, it's just, he's trending to the, you know, to the mean, right? And you're, 
it, it's, I it's actually, crazy. I, I think I think a lot of Blues fans are used to the idea that we're just going to recycle goalies. Yeah. So let's be proactive about it. I, 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 I'm, uh, I, we have in the past as a fan base tried to run out goalies early, uh, way mm-hmm. too soon. You know, at the first sign of a hiccup is I like, get rid of them. And, uh, that's, mm-hmm. that's always been the case. And I think management, um, not that they listen to the fans, uh, necessarily, but they have been too quick to move on from goalies at times. Um, and I, and I think that's hurt them. So, uh, I, it, it and, well, Army's recent not example, recent example would be Halak and Elliot. Like I remember, and and again, I think we had this conversation on the show. That's how long we've been around, folks. Um, that uh, Halak and Elliot, it was Elliot was coming out of nowhere, playing great, and Halak was you know not playing his best, but okay. But everyone was like, trade Halak. Why do we need him? We don't need him. We got Brian Elliot. He's playing great. Trade Halak, and it's like. You have two good goalies. It doesn't matter what goalie you play; they're winning games. Why do right. you want very, to one of them? Right, two good goalies at very reasonable salaries. As right, well. yeah, right, and and right now during the COVID era, I mean, what happens down the stretch during an important run of games or in the playoffs, even if uh, Bennington tests positive for COVID and we moved moved Huso midway through the season because the fan base wanted him gone and he could we can get something for him, right? All of a sudden, then we, then we got Lindgren. Who, I mean, he might play well. Uh, who knows? But... It's it's one of my favorite storylines of the year. But I said this on a previous show when it was going on. You send him back down because Huso has. You, you can't put Huso through waivers. You're gonna lose him, no. and that would be the mm-hmm. dumbest right. way to lose him. Right. So you're gonna send Lindgren back down. He's he's probably not going to come back and have the same results that he did. I love the results that he had. He's such a likable guy. Yeah. And that, that's that part story of the line of, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And, and for me, you know, as, as a Montreal Canadiens fan who, you know, was like totally understood the vindictiveness in him, you know, saying, yeah, you don't have to tell me who we're playing. And then, you know, for him to have such a strong game against them, you know, that I I love that. And so, you know, I, I, he's my, one of my favorite stories of the blues this year so far. I don't expect him to come back here and win another game this year. I would love it. I would love it, but it means bad things have happened or stupid things have happened. But I like the fact that he's there, right? In case we need him. We had, I, I've seen a lot of people talk about how back in the trade Hofer, uh, trade uh, Huso con- a conversation that, uh, you know, trade Huso, you know, bring up Hofer. He's, he's, he's uh, in the pipeline ready to go. And I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, that's, that's a funny comment too. Like there's always the next best thing We've got mm-hmm. in the AHL ready to go. He's ready to come up. He'll fill in that. He's cheaper. He's better. It's like move the high price guy, get the young kid in here who's ready to go, and let's roll with him. He's going to be fantastic. I'm like, how often does that work out? Rarely. And then, and then let's just say it does work out. Then the conversation becomes, well, now you got to trade him because you he's get something for him. Great. Right? He's young. You can't pay him when his contract's up. It's a, <laughs> it's a cycle that it's, will continue forever. And it it's is. so not it is so toxic. It is a, yeah. how can you ever be happy? I feel sorry for those people because they're never happy with the team that's in front of them. I don't get it. Um, I like uh, what Austin Lynch said here because I actually kind of made this comment to you guys uh, over the weekend. I swear to God, I was about to delete Twitter the other night after the game, just blaming Binner, especially after Bortuzzo literally tackled Binner. Obviously <laughs> not on purpose, but that's not a goalie problem. And I'll add to that real quick. Bob Rakowski, who this gets our comment of the show, two good goalies are awesome. Playing defense is awesomer. Right. And I'm 100% with that. I, Yes, yeah, Spinnington could have come up big. We talked about it with the Toronto game. That, you know, you want him to make the big save, just this miraculous, stupid save, which, by the way, if you watch that first power play Calgary had, he had about two of those that should have been in the back of the net. But he made two very good saves, sliding across the crease and stoning them. It's just they got chance after chance after mm-hmm. chance after chance. And if that happens, I don't care who the goalie is, the puck's going to go to the back of the net more often than not. And 
and then and th- let's add in too the blues couldn't get any offense going it was bill you right. can speak to this when when you're playing defense the entire fucking game not only are the players on the ice Wait. getting tired the skaters the goalie is getting tired having to go back and forth preparing mentally for the save if you're not seeing your team play offense at all all of a sudden that, it's 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 barring down on you oh my god i am gonna have to make 80 saves tonight yeah no it, it, it it's a couple of things it's that but it's also you you know you realize what's going on in front of you so you you try to step up your game and take your focus you know it, it ruins your focus but i'll i'll say with with this game and with biddington i blame him for one goal and that was the first he had a chance to knock the puck down on the on that dump in, and he just kind of you know half-assed it behind the net, you know, and and didn't get the puck knocked down. And then I I didn't like his positioning. Uh, I, hell of a shot by Zadorov, and Pareko, you know, did a great job screening. Um, but yeah, I I thought that he could have played that entire thing better. After that, every other goal the the goal that clinched the game for me like it, at the point that it's it's three to one i thought we still had a chance that fourth goal the monahan power play goal ryan o'reilly failed to clear the zone a fairly easy out on the penalty kill and he failed to do it and then didn't get back into position in the slot and quick passing bang bang they score you know that at that point it's like it's over right this this game that that to me it was like ex, that's when i accepted the fate but not at all that i think it was on jordan bennington apart from that first goal i thought uh i thought the blues had a shot you know they're getting outplayed but then that power play late in the first period when it was three to one to get back to within one goal and i thought okay power play the blues power play is fantastic this is where you need it to get you back in the game. Maybe, you know, change the momentum going into the break, you know, make it three to two. And that didn't happen. And then it was four to one, five to one, and the game's over. So, um, yeah. And, and for me, like I've talked to uh, the last couple of weeks, the Washington game and then the Nashville game last week, the Pronger night, um, they came out and looked awful. And it was concerning because it was, oh, God, this game is not going to go well. Well, then they got one big goal, one big something happened to turn it around, and the Blues all of a sudden were, you know, the monsters of the game. And and it was like, there's no way they're getting beat tonight. You just – you didn't see anything like that in the first period with the Calgary game. Again, you go up one nothing on the Bozak goal, but after that, it was all Calgary. There was nothing St. Louis. I mean, they had nine shots through two periods. You just mm-hmm. knew that moment wasn't coming, and that was, okay – this game is going to be the stinker of the season, especially when the second period is typically our, our, our great period in the game and we got destroyed. So right. Jim Thomas, Jim Thomas wrote an article in SDL today. Uh, and, but it's behind a paywall and I can't see it. Um, it's a premium article and it's titled, you are the blues you don't pay for St. Louis post dispatch. I don't are the blues likely you, you to don't depart? Pay to look at more ads. <laughs> they just redesigned their site. <laughs> Uh, are the Blues likely to part with Jordan Bennington? And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> um, and I'm hoping that article consisted of, in, in its entirety. It'd be funny if you click on the link to read the article and the only thing in the article was no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that would have been no, the that's... only thing that you could say in that article. You know what that, and I'm, I hate to call Jim Thomas out for this. I, I really don't mean to, clickbait? but that is a clickbait article. That is a... I'm giving the fans what they want to hear, what everyone's talking about. I'm the insider. And I guarantee he went in that article. It probably did basically say no. Right. But I'm he sure. wants people to read it, which I get, but not a good article. <laughs> not good at all. Friend of the show, Lou Korak, shared some goalie info from Kevin Woodley on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, this was great. This was Kevin Woodley great. Covers and, Vancouver for NHL.com and has also been a contributor to Ingle Magazine. Ingle Magazine, right? And I follow think for we, I think we could. I think we could get him. He might be a good get. So That'd be a good get to talk yeah. about this. Try, because, try to get him on. Yeah. So Lou said, uh, check out this thread started by my colleague and goalie specialist Kevin's in goal at Kevin's in goal. Uh, some perspective uh, for all you uh, 
uh, all you, quote, get Bennington's ass out of there, people. Uh, and for those that actually understand. <laughs> God bless Lou. I know, right? So he goes on to uh, list a bunch of his tweets, um, which were great to talk about the goaltending and, and stats and how great Huso has been. He's been on a heater, which everybody knows. Um, but uh, but he also talks about defensive stats and how the defensive stats uh, are hurting Bennington more than they're hurting Huso. Um, but the one tweet that this guy put out said, for all noise surrounding Blues games, Bennington is also still performing at a really high level this season. If any narrative should end, it's that St. Louis, is, that St. Louis defends well. But numbers show it's been worse for Bennington, and that's part, but not all, of the difference. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to get him on to talk more about that. But to summarize, I what he said was, Huso's on fire, try. Bennington isn't playing as poorly as people are saying, uh, but he does need to be, be better. Uh, but the Blues defense has been completely unacceptable, uh, especially in front of Bennington. For whatever reason, there's a difference. So, and this was an issue back um, uh, with uh, Bennington or with uh, uh, yeah Bennington and Allen um, for a while. There was the well, the Blues defense plays worse in front of Allen nonsense. But right, um, yeah. So, and and let's not forget the Toronto game. Uh, there was some bad defense in that game. We we talked about that on the show that. You had a couple big turnovers in the first period that led to goals. Um, the only one it really that you could pin on Bennington was the game winner, unfortunately. But that was a game where if yeah. the offense isn't showing up like they did, that's another blowout loss. But the because the defense right. just looked awful against Toronto. And is my memory incorrect, or did not Robert Portuzo also wind up interfering with Jordan Bennington attempting to make a save in that game? I'm sure he did. <laughs> uh, Portuzo's the Austin a big Matthews power play goal. He's a big right. go down in front, go down in the crease kind of guy, be a second goalie kind of a guy, um, which I'm sure goalies love, right? <laughs> Defenseman getting down on the hands and knees uh, in the crease. Um, you go like slide across, and you. Hit I I got screamed at by my goalie last week because I I dove in front of him to block a shot, and I blocked it, and it actually ended up deflecting off my shin guard and out of the zone. He was yelling at me during play, "Don't ever fucking do that again!" And I was like, "I just made a block, man!" And he's just like, "I don't care. Don't do that in front of me. <laughs> get out the way. We're not we're not gonna let you get that." have that validation that you did something good because you didn't <laughs> uh, you got lucky there was a <laughs> there was a tweet that i uh, that i saw that kind of enca- uh, nicely encapsulates um uh the general mindset of uh social media comments about goaltending that i disagree and also don't understand uh so this was uh f- from thomas at ouf uh, ou fan 919 and this was in replying yeah. to one of Lou's uh, uh, comments. He goes, I get it. He doesn't have all the help in the world at times, especially tonight, referring to Bennington. But he's given up 23 goals in his last five games. That's not going to cut it no matter how bad the, uh, no matter how bad the play is in front of him. He's supposed to be your number one goalie. If the play in front of you is bad, so you're still supposed to play well and keep the puck out of your net regardless. That's what he's saying, and I'm like, how does that make sense? How, so, it, so it's always the goalie's fault, then always, always, always. Yep. never. I mean, even yeah. if defense plays yeah, poorly, I, it's it's still the goalie's fault does, because does you're the number he one. Complain? Bullshit. I wonder if this is the guy that if this is a guy that would complain if the defense or if uh, the goaltender goaltender's playing fantastic, but the other they're not scoring goals. The offense isn't there. Are you fucking yelling about, well, that's supposed to be an NHL offense? No, because you're probably giving the offense a pass at the end of the day and saying, it's, ah, well, you know, you're not going to score every game. You know, it's, no, it's the same fucking thing here. It's lazy analysis. It, it's, 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 it's someone who doesn't know what to look for when they're, when they're analyzing something. They want to comment, but they don't know what they're looking for. But the, the puck's in the net and the goal is responsible for keeping the puck out of the net. So it's his fault. And that's that's in a nutshell. That's what it is. No matter how bad the team's playing in front of him, the goalie still has the job to keep the puck out of the net. That's that's essentially what he's saying. And that's that's the mindset of way too many people. And it's just you, each goal, case by case basis. You got to it's eye test. You don't look at the box score to see how good a goalie is. You watch the fucking games. You see how the goals go in. You see who missed assignments. You see if the goalie should or shouldn't have had it. 
It's just, it's a whole bunch of things. And you got to watch the games and know what you're looking for when you're, when you're trying to analyze the game. If you don't know what you're looking for, don't analyze the game. <laughs> just watch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so what do we do with our goaltending, guys? Ride the hot hand, 50-50 split. Who do you start tomorrow? Oh. Thursday. <laughs> you know, I... the easy answer is who so, but. I think I said this last week too. I want to see Bennington bounce back. Oh, I, I want yeah. I want him to have that chance because he's done it so many times. But again, Ooh. you're not in a position where you're many points ahead or anything, or you're guaranteed a playoff spot at this point. So I think you have to go Huso. You go Huso because of this stat: Calgary and their six nothing win at Columbus tonight. Franchise record: sixty two shots on goal, not shot attempts. Shots on goal. They are finding <laughs> ways to get the puck to the net. I want Huso. You know, he he almost gave up a goal. Manjapani hit the post. Um, uh, you know, nice, nice little forehand backhand Zeke move. Um, but everything stayed out and he looked big. You know, Bennington, I think, was uh, overplaying angles and, I, and yeah. playing a little small. Huso, Huso yeah. all the way. You, 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 yeah, if the, if the stats hold true, where well, the defense does play a little better in front of Huso, then you, I mean, <clears throat> you go with the, you go with what has the best chance to win you a game that night. And that's the way, that's the way it's going to be. I think, and especially with yeah. Bennington's play uh, against Calgary, not that he was to blame for that, for that at all. Um, right. But, you know, you allow seven, you know, you give the other guy a shot next game. It's just the way it goes. So I think. And um, Huso, Huso's home record. Right. The yeah. guy is right. great at home. Right. Yeah. Which, and there, there now so many you watch. statistical reasons to go with him. You the watch. emotional reason, right. The, the emotional reason you want Bennington because you want, you want him to fight and he's the fighter. Right. But mm -hmm. no. you watch, we, we win this game four to one. Huso stops 38 to 39. And all of a sudden, you know, social media blues, uh, blue social media is just that much more anti Bennington because of, Oh the, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen you know what's gonna happen oh yeah <clears throat> um let's see here we've got um what do we got coming up next we got um oh, my notes you got, well <clears throat> we got perspective on go. the well the james neal i uh, got some guys who sent down to uh, uh springfield and then next up for the blues which we talked about already and some rapid fire tidbits from around the nhl which should be fun uh after this where are you are you you're taking off jeff right yeah i gotta get out of here boys uh okay. thanks for starting the show early for me um yep. can't wait until next week when we have the same conversation about goalies no. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen and, for a while yep and and please take and apply what you learned here tonight jeff <sighs> yeah i will, save you I, will. Last week with Ron. <laughs> I will i will uh i will also be listening on my ride to the rink so uh do me proud boys or just thanks just, everybody. Just fan out your your shin pads like Craig Ludwig, you know, just fan them out. That's what I'll do. There you go. All right. See you, Jeff. See you guys. Center Ice Brewery is St. Louis's only hockey themed brew house. Stop on in during the next game to experience the ultimate hockey fan brewery while sampling various hockey inspired beers, such as Old Arena Lager, the Beauty IPA, the Rotating Pale Ale series, or seasonal offerings such as their Imperial Stout, their Lime Sherbet Sour, and much more. While you're there enjoying any number of their fantastic beverages, you can admire the bar top and tables made of authentic arena wood and the actual penalty box door from the old barn. Located at 3126 Olive Street in Midtown St. Louis, it's one of the best places to watch a Blues game or any game. Visit centereyesbrewery.com today to schedule a no-contact curbside pickup or make a reservation in the tap room. Center Ice Brewery, let's go Blues. Please drink responsibly. <laughs> So much more room width wise to stretch out again. All right. Feels good, doesn't it? It does feel good, yeah. <clears throat> right. And, and people can <laughs> people can admire my dogs. Yes. We, Your dog, yeah, they're always the, taking the hanging out on the couch right behind you. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That, Almost like yeah. a camouflage. Yeah. It's I I I yeah. That was not a mistake that I bought a great couch <laughs> with two great dogs. Yeah. It's, it's smart on a couple levels, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Just don't uh, accidentally sit on one if you don't see it. Like, uh, you watch Sopranos at all? When Christopher sits on uh, his girlfriend's dog on the couch and he's he's like high and it's a small little dog and he suffocates it, just so he passes out and sits. So <laughs>
Yeah, I I, uh, I s- didn't get all the way through The Sopranos, and I think that was probably the season that that I stopped when Christopher yeah. started getting older. Yeah, yeah, and trouble with the drugs. That was a yeah, yeah. <clears throat> don't do drugs, kids. Uh, <laughs> don't do drugs and own a small little dog that is the same color as your couch. <laughs> yes. Uh, perspective on the seven one loss, uh, before we just completely, uh, turn the page on this game, uh, blues came into this game and this is Luke Korak tweeted some of the stuff out, uh, friend of the show, Luke Korak, the blues came into this game, 13, three and one in their past 17 games, haven't lost back to back games in regulation since November 14th and 16th. So they haven't gone more than a game without earning a point in nearly two and a half months. So calm the fuck down. Thus, the title of the show. Yeah. Uh, James Neal, uh, let's see, uh, Trubchenko, Joshua, and Rosen assigned to Springfield. Uh, James Neal did not have to clear waivers. Someone asked that online. Um, next up for the Blues tomorrow, Thursday night, uh, Thursday night. If you're listening to the podcast on Thursday, it's tonight. Um, so we talked about that already. So, rapid fire tidbits from around the NHL. Uh, I got a few things here before we wrap the show up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Keith Yandel sets the record for most consecutive games played, 965 straight games. He passed Doug, Doug Jarvis in what was the Flyers' 13th straight loss this season and 30th in 43 games. Yikes. 13 straight losses. God. 16 years he played in the league uh, so far. 1,075 games played. He's played for uh, the Arizona Phoenix franchise, Florida, the Rangers, Philadelphia. Uh, 102 goals, 511 assists. Phil Kessel, of all people, I, every time I hear this, I think, oh, that's right. He's got a streak going. Phil Kessel is only 24 games behind Yandel. So if Kessel stays healthy, Yandel will have to keep playing if he wants to hold the record for very long. Um, with 73% of NHL players contracting COVID and missing games, it's extra interesting that both he and Kessel have had their streaks going. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I, they're, they're kind of lucky, actually. Right. right. To me, that's that's the amazing thing to do this in the area, the era of COVID, right? What, what are they doing differently from everybody else? Like, are they like, no, I'm just going to stay out here on the ice until the rest of you motherfuckers have left the building. (laughs) Well, I think Phil Kessel's uh, uh, suggestion is, Hey, eat a lot of hot dogs. That goes off the COVID. That's right. (laughs) Right. Hmm, Smoked meat. Yeah. Um, so, so there you go. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how long this goes. He's so close to a thousand, you know, it'd be, I'd be kind of cool to see him get a thousand. Uh, nice, nice, yeah. nice number. Uh, Aaron Did you think Doug Jarvis was like praying for COVID for the guy. I mean, I don't know. Jar- you think he wanted the record or, to hold on to it? I don't know. I mean, nah, he's, he's still around the game. So maybe not, but you know, it, it's, it, it's like, I don't know. It it's an impressive number no matter what, and Jarvis held it forever. So I, I think that uh, you know Jarvis isn't a Hall of Fame kind of caliber player, but to have well, that record, that, I'm sure it's disappointing to lose it. Here's here's the deal with Jarvis though; he never missed an NHL game from start to finish. The entire right, nine, the entire career. Yeah, nine sixty four. That's that. That's his entire playing career. He never missed a game. And if you look at his his stat line, uh, games played, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, all the way down. Back when he played eighty games, and then when he went to eighty two, mm-hmm. it was eighty two. And then, uh, uh, yeah, it was eighty two, and then eighty two again. Yeah. So he's he just, and and that's not the case with, uh, um, uh, Yandel. He uh, yeah, no. no he 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 missed games early in his career, but he's played more games total right now. So, right, and he also has spanned you know what two lockouts, so that that may have helped. True, true. Um, and he's yeah he's played three more three more years too. So yeah. Uh, Still, Regardless, it, yeah, it's it it's amazing, especially like you said, um, in the age of COVID. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, unlikely. You would think, oh boy, here we go. This is going to end. Uh, but uh, Aaron Dell, 
faces a likely suspension for the hit on Drake Batherson. This is interesting because someone who may not know who Arendelle is, why is it? Why are you talking about a hit? He is a goalie. <laughs> right. He's a goalie. And and to clarify, we talked about this uh, the, at the top of the show. He did. He got three games. It, yes, it right. Came down, right. came down about seven o'clock St. Louis time uh, while I was eating dinner. I was uh, watching the uh, the suspension video. Um, this is interference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was uh, uh, doing some other stuff. I didn't uh, catch the news before the show, so which we started early. So, um, yeah. So with about a minute left in the first period, after he stopped the uh, puck for defenseman uh, Matias Samuelson beside the net. Dell put his shoulder right into Batherson as Ottawa's uh, leading scorer pursued Samuelson. Uh, Batherson's feet hit the bo- end boards uh, awkwardly, and he uh, had to be helped off the ice. He did not return. Uh, Senators coach DJ Smith told reporters in Ottawa that Batherson, uh, who has scored 13 goals and 34 points this season, will miss the initial All Star game on February 5th. I hope he's all right, Dell said. I wasn't trying to hurt anybody. Uh, Senators coach DJ, DJ Smith said uh, he wasn't in the path of the goalie, and at the last second, the goalie steps back and hits him. Smith said, when I come in and see replays of him doing it other times and running out to hit other players, you know it's a pattern. It's unfortunate because our best leading scorer is going to be out a significant amount of time on a play that didn't need to happen. I believe, Dell that he didn't mean mm-hmm. to hurt. He didn't mean to hurt him. Right. He, he's right. just trying to run interference. Um, right. It- it happens. Right. And it's why something goes I think do. this right. This is one of those cases that you know I as as the goalie of the group, I, I would love to just you know pull out my goalie union card and say he shouldn't have been suspended for it, but it, it was a dangerous play, right? And it you know I I think this this could get us into the the greater debate uh, you know about the nhl suspension policies and you know it resulted in an injury and that that was a big determining factor and should that be the case in this case i, I it's hard for me to argue that that this wasn't suspension worthy it, um, it, that's an interesting that's interesting and and i think it's it's a it's a great question cuz on the surface someone who just looks at it's oh yeah he was hurt it's a suspension. But if you think about it, if a defenseman had done that, had just mm. put a shoulder into the guy, interfered with him, and then he goes, you know, hits the boards eight feet away, um, awkwardly, he's not, the defenseman's not getting suspended. Right. Uh, it's an interference call. And it's an unfortunate end to a, a two-minute penalty. Um, but because it was a goalie, and I guess because – now, you don't expect to be interfered with from a player, I guess – Totally, but it, it right. can happen. But as a goalie, as you, if you if you're cruising by the net, you're even less likely to expect. I well, that's not true because goalies do this. But um, you know, it's, it, I guess right. I, I'm having a hard time trying to de- trying to defend the suspension. I, I feel like it's a good suspension, but I am having a hard time articulating why. Because with a defenseman would not be suspended for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think you know. Stepping back for a second and looking at the play overall, this this isn't you know this this play has become more prevalent in the last ten years or so. Um, not not the the hit on the goalie, but a forward trying to go full speed to cut off a defenseman and make a hit behind the net. Right. Yeah. That that just it, you know in in Dell. Dell did exactly what the video shows and what the what the analysis said. It was interference. He paused and he extended his shoulder back into Batherson. And you know, a guy coming in full speed, right, is is always going to be dangerous. I mean, how many times have we seen that be? a factor in, in a suspension video, right? Somebody coming in hard around the net. It used to be, you know, there was that time that it was the blindside hit by the defenseman, you know, hitting the unsuspecting guy um, or the Tom Wilson's of the world, hitting the unsuspecting guy coming around the opposite side of the net. It's, it's odd that it's the goalie, right? It's, it's odd that it's Aaron Dell, you know, putting his shoulder out and, and, you know, Really, I'm I'm 
I was sh- the first time I saw the play. I thought, man, it looked like he made head contact, but it was it was it was you know mm-hmm. shoulder into body, not head, as the principal point of contact. I can't, I I can't you know get to a point that I can just you know say, hey, he's a goalie, he shouldn't have got suspended, right? The, this play, I I think it deserved it deserved suspension. I don't know. I don't know how but to hey. feel about it. <laughs> I, I I get it. I totally get what you're saying. It makes sense. But uh, but I think uh, I think a valid argument can be made on the other side too. It's just interesting uh, how uh, I don't know. I I, I I I always have an opinion on everything. I'm having a hard time here. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about Brady Chuck getting into the All Star game because of it? Yeah. Um. I I I, you know, I could. I, Brady Kachuk was probably more deserving, right? So, no, bad. You don't think so? I mean, he's having a what? Nah. He's got more points, right? I don't. I don't what's Kachuk, Brady's stats. Kachuk's the cat, you know, the youngest captain in in yeah. uh, Ottawa Senators history. He's a sexier name, but come on, Drake Batherson. Did you say his name on this podcast before tonight? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but look at his stat line. His stat line's insane. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He is the team's leading scorer. That's right. Um, Kachuk's second. Yeah. Kachuk's got more penalty minutes. You put some value right. on that. He's, he's a Kachuk. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I, I'm happy for Kachuk to get in, but not at the, you know, expense that it happens this way. I, that's All rough. Right. I mean, I, I, I I'm going to say, okay. Yeah. I'm good with the suspension. Um, but, it's I feel hypocritical because if a defenseman did it, I would say no, he doesn't get he shouldn't get suspended. The exact same position on the ice and everything. But it's weird just because it's a different it's a, this okay, so this reminds me a little bit of when Courtnall ran store. All right. Well like store leans out of his goal to kind of, you know, uh interfere a little with Courtnall and Courtnall says, Nope, I'm running right through you. Mm-hmm. And he just hits him right. in the head. So he was he was trying to dissuade him from going full bore around the net. Right. And well, and Courtney Court told Hall, Hall, I think, before he did it, he was, I'm gonna I'm gonna run him over. <laughs> if I get the chance, I'm running him over. And he did. And uh and now at the time, you know, you could see Store lean out. You know, but right. I don't think Store Store wasn't expecting Courtney to destroy him. Right, and that that game, I I I really really hope that we can do a summer series show uh, with uh, yeah with uh, Eddie um, from uh, the the Los Angeles Kings podcast. Right? Oh that, yeah, that would be so awesome. Like if we could do something similar to what we did with the uh, uh, yeah the Puck Stories podcast. Yeah, just get together. And, and drink a bunch of beers and watch that series. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we we won it in. Uh, that was a uh, five games, right? We won four games to one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. And we nope. all learned who Sean O'Donnell was that day. Yeah, five minute major for. Well, yeah, five minute major for. Uh, Cornell got two, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, you know O'Donnell got five, and five and two. So right. that was the, the two, two uh, canceled, and then we got the five minute power play and scored four goals on it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and won the game. Oh my god, that was uh, funny. It was funny when San Jose came back against uh, uh, Vegas a couple years ago in the playoffs, right? Uh, they scored the four goals there on the on the power play, right. and people the, are like, "Has this ever happened right. before?" I'm like, "Yeah, hello." <laughs> he, yep, that that was the the Pavelski play, right? <laughs> yes, right, right. Which actually they probably shouldn't have had that power play so right yeah right although uh you know i'm sure the friends at teal town would would uh i think they would agree with us in silence and they would probably uh disagree with us uh, vocally if that makes sense they know right they know Uh, sometimes, uh, Eric, sometimes Eric checks in. I don't know if he's listening. <laughs> if he was listening, he was for sure check in. Uh, so uh, speaking of Eric, uh, he was with us the, when uh, we reviewed all the retro reverse jerseys, reverse retro jerseys uh, last season. Uh, it was a fun show, long show, but uh, so they're bringing the they've announced they're bringing the reverse retros back next season. They're gonna make new ones. 
<clears throat> so, well, I mean, so what do you think about them bringing back the reverse retro idea? I mean, <laughs> does it have to be reverse retro? Why not just be like a, a different jersey a mix up, right? Right. Just do something, you know, that is just loosely tied to the the concept of the team. Um, I I don't know. I, I agree. there there were so many bad jerseys. In That's the, the last problem. Batch. That's the problem I have because I mean I have no problem with putting out different jerseys. That's fine. But but and there were a lot of teams that didn't even go by the reverse retro idea, you know. Right. They they, they went different color schemes, different logos, and everything. They didn't uh, do just reverse retro. Or you could be like Jeff pointed out on Twitter, the New York Islanders did really not even try. Right. Just here's here's another jersey. And what's Detroit gonna do? Because they know. <laughs> they right. they they put some gray in their jerseys last year, but that was I mean. Okay, now like oh shit. Now what we're gonna do. Use the D? Yeah. The big D on the on the jersey or the script D or something, or I don't know. Yeah. I I mean at one point, um, you know, like the the, it was the Detroit Cougars, I think was a predecessor to the Red Wings, you know. Yeah. Like put put a drunk, you know, fifty something woman on the jersey and call it the Detroit Cougars again. That would be fun. <laughs> Um, Austin Lynch says, uh, can it be the Navy blue arch logo alternate in white? That'd be beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, he said the Islanders need to do the fishermen. I think they might this year. Cause they did, they, they got right. flack for not trying to correct that last time. Right. <clears throat> um, what well, so I, I, I think, okay. I almost think the blues could, they could do what, what Austin said to do. They could go the, the home version of that Jersey. Uh, which would be which would look kind of cool, or they'd have to go like yellow jersey, wouldn't they? Yeah, because yeah, they they no are, do do not do that, do not go yellow. God, that that I'm I'm Nashville has not done well with that. No. Uh, Pittsburgh <laughs> maybe, but no, don't don't do that. Uh, Liverpool this year did their third kit is yellow and red and it looks like a fucking like a, a hot dog vendor or a mustard bottle or something it's terrible <laughs> I, I could not could not deal with too much yellow in a, in a blue sweater i'm gonna be uh mocking up a handful of reverse retro sweaters like i did last year uh, uh hopefully hopefully they're better than you know this is funny when you see uh the reverse retro uh concept come out you see you'll see people doing their own uh some look kind of cool some are just dumb <laughs> stupid you know they, what do you think of this everybody oh it looks really good I'm like no it doesn't no it doesn't it looks terrible um you're you're taking the exact same jersey we had and just changing you're putting a logo from a different style jersey on this jersey you're like what are you doing um so hopefully hopefully the ones i do will be a little better than some of those out there but uh, i'll share them on social media and maybe on an upcoming show. Um, but that'll be fun to kind of play around with and see what we can do. Um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't be against doing something with the, uh, late eighties, early nineties, uh, blues jerseys, the no. hollow notes. That, ones. It, yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's gotta be the next one in the rotation, right? We've, we've hit every era except for maybe the early eighties. Um, the, the Lute Sutter, um, but they did that for, um, for uh one of the alumni events yep. at some point yeah uh, some people are suggesting the uh the rejected jersey <laughs> like no no i mean no i mean no oh god i yeah it's only for a handful of games but still they're gonna sell that thing you're gonna see people wearing them Ugh, gross <laughs> no thanks yeah please no yeah anyway well i i'm I mean, hopefully i and I'm, I'm maybe the, I don't know, maybe the league will turn out some better ones. They, they had like three good ones and a handful of, eh, they're okay. And there's a bunch of bad ones. So I was very critical of a lot of them last year, probably more, more than needed to be, but yeah, I'm picky. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm all for 
you know, introducing more variety year, year over year. Like that, that's one thing, you know, as, as a, you know, uh, someone who's become a, a, a fan of soccer uh, much more so than I, I was before. Uh, the fact that they turn their kits over every year. I like it. I, you okay. know, I, it, it's, it's, you know, hockey jerseys. Yeah. do tend to be a little bit more expensive, but you know, I, I, I think it's for one, it's, it's, you know, it drives revenue people, you know, and, and then you get, you get to have years where you have a bad idea, right? It, it, it allows <laughs> for it, but you know, when, when it, it, it's this idea that you're going to wear something for five, 10 years and people are going to sink, you know, you know, up to 350, 400 bucks into a <clears throat> custom sweater, right? It, it, it becomes a little too risky. So if you, you know, maybe scale it back a little bit, reintroduce every year, every other year, it's it's a selling opportunity. And, I, you know, and I'm frankly surprised the NHL hasn't done it. You know what they should do? They, I mean, if they're going to be, be doing, instead of doing reverse retro again, they really should do, uh, a, a, adopt, have a fan concept. Every team... Yeah adopts a fan concept jersey where fans submit jerseys because there are some really fantastic concept jerseys out there and they could be anything you know i mean the name stays the same you know st louis blues but you could design it any way you want and uh there have been some cool concept jerseys around the league really co- and, and just have a have something where there's a contest or maybe a fan vote or because if you, I've I've seen I've been a part of uh, situations where you have like a, a a panel of people like uh like pick the winners of a and that never goes well for some reason I think people are stupid I think I think fan voting is 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 kind of the way to go maybe uh, they tend to get it right in mass you you put you put uh, you have somebody pick out half a dozen jerseys and put them in a boardroom of twelve people that half don't have any design experience whatsoever and they're going to pick out maybe not the best one. So it's happened a lot. Right. I've, I've experienced right. that a lot. Yeah. A boardroom or even a focus group, right? You get the wrong people in a focus yep. group. Right. I mean, it, it just, it, it's, it's a bad idea. Yep. Right. Especially, especially if you get uh, impressionable people in that focus group, like, well, what do you think about this one? <laughs> it's like, you this, don't this know what good happens. design is. <laughs> right. You're wearing plaid pants with a striped one. shirt. <laughs> <laughs> right. This happens to be the one that the owner's, uh, the owner's niece came up with and she would leave right. a load. Yeah. And, and, and none of this. In. Yeah. And, and nobody that, that no, no owner's son designing these things or none of this stuff. Uh, Matt Harris said in YouTube chat, I read somewhere of people wanting to use the trumpet secondary as a main logo. Not a big fan of that. I'm not either. I don't, I can't, mm. I don't, I, mm. I mean, you want to put it on the shoulders on a Jersey design. I'm cool with that, but I don't, I'm not right. a big fan of that as the main on the chest. Again, I think if, if you're doing this, this, you know, where, where you're committed to, you know, different jerseys every year, you can do things like that. But if it's something that's, you know, that's going to be there, like, you know, I, I loved the Canadians reverse retro. I bought one. Unfortunately, I got the wrong name on it because it was Kakaniami, and I'm never going to wear it again. <laughs> but he but scored a big goal against Toronto. He did, and yeah. and I got to shove it in Toronto's fan's <laughs> face at Center Ice Brewery. It was a beautiful moment for me. That was great. Uh, but you know, I, I I love that jersey, um, and they could run that out again. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe they could do some kind of contest where it's like you get it until the fans vote it out. Oh. Right. You, you, yeah, but boy, it, it, boy, you know a what? Survivor, though? A survivor, a survivor of jerseys. That's an that's an interesting game. Um, the problem with that is, I you know, I think there are a lot of people that like the clown jerseys right now. You know, <laughs> there's there's well, that 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 fan. Well, you're, or you're you're gonna have people that say, I, I guess too, a fan vote is also very dangerous, and that um, the ugliest might win. Right. You know what I mean? On purpose. Right. So right. like who Bodie McBoatface. Yeah. Right. Bodie McBoatface or um, <laughs> who, who was the guy, uh, Rory, uh, what was his name that uh, we were trying to get uh, elected into the all-star game, um, you know, before John oh, Scott. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vancouver Canucks guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, the, you you get those those viral moments, and the NHL is not a not a league that's going to allow that kind of thing to happen. No, but I think it would be cool to do some. I I think that the, the a great, especially, you know, with all the COVID crap going on, and and uh, you know, to bring to bring the fans into the fold a little more with this kind of a thing to have them design the jerseys and you know give the winner you know season tickets or something uh that'd be cool i mean it, it, and yeah none of this 50 bucks for a winner and design bullshit you know give them something significant um <laughs> it's uh, you you'll see that you'll see design contests you know design our logo win 50 bucks 50 bucks you know how many thousands of dollars it costs you to get a logo design from like an ad agency right. and you want a professional looking logo from the, the public for 50 bucks fuck you give them something right. good Jesus. right and then when when that is a hit and you sell it and make hundreds of thousands if not yes. millions of dollars you could afford to give somebody a season ticket for a year i think the guy who designed the swoosh didn't make much at all he like it was like 100 bucks a long time ago nike swoosh okay Not surprised yeah Not surprised with nike but i mean that was a long time ago i don't know the details but uh seems like he should be compensated better somehow yeah agreed uh, yeah all right ready to wrap her up here yeah yeah ponder yeah. should uh ponder should be getting on the ice and he can take his earbuds out now so um <laughs> thanks thanks for listening jeff yeah participate and then listen good luck sir good luck in your game and uh, uh don't don't piss off too many goalies be in good shape definitely definitely yeah. apply what you learned here tonight <laughs> support for let's go blues radio is brought to you in part by id life the world's only truly personalized vitamin platform based on a health assessment of your dna visit rockin that for more information that's rockin that and get 10 percent off by emailing Dustin at rockin' that idea life doc, at, excuse me, rockin' that idea life at gmail.com and tell him Let's Go Blues Radio sent you. And by Center Ice Brewery, St. Louis's hockey themed brewery. Visit centericebrewery.com today to schedule a like, no contact curbside pickup or to make a reservation in their awesome tap room located at 3126 Olive Street in Midtown St. Louis. It's one of the best places to watch a blues game. That's centericebrewery.com. Please drink responsibly. That'll wrap up episode 20 of season 10 of the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast, Let's Go Blues Radio. Thanks for listening, and thanks to those who participated in the YouTube and Facebook live chats during the live show. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. For Jeff Ponder and Bill Day, I'm Craig Price. Until next time, everyone, let's go Blues beat Calgary. Beat the Calgary Flamers tomorrow behind Philly Huso. <laughs> Uh, the Chiefs are at home tonight against Cyanusport at the War Memorial at 8. Good seats are still available. I'll work that sport. I think that went very well. Thank you for listening to Let's Go Blues Radio. Now take off, hosers. I want you to have a heart attack and die so that we never have to do this shit again. Well, there's 90 minutes of your life you'll never get back. Sorry. <laughs> St. Louis Blues. St. Louis Blues. Have you heard the news about our St. Louis Blues? They've only just begun, they're on their way to number one. Now there's no more blues for our St. Louis Blues. The Blues are on the ice tonight again. 